Hey everyone, welcome to my first devlog video. Now I've been wanting to make this for quite some time now, uh, but I've been sort of switching back and forth between a few ideas and I feel now that I'm finally at a point where I have a game that I'm developing that's sort of stable enough, or at least for now, where I can start uh, documenting my progress. Hopefully it'll be entertaining for some people and if not, at least I'll have a series of videos to watch when I'm old about a time I tried to make a game. So, what am I making? So, I'm working at the moment on a casual RPG building game. I think sums it up pretty well. So, it's inspired by games like Stardew Valley, combined with aspects uh, of Minecraft, and a few other games sort of all thrown together. The idea is that you'll play as a character exploring this world. Uh, the world will be made of voxels and you have to search for resources, materials, and sort of rare objects and items. And then you have sort of this plot of land similar to sort of in Stardew Valley, where on that land you can use all of your materials, resources, and things you find throughout the world to build uh, all sorts of different things. Starting off, I should probably cover how I got to where I'm at now. So around a year and a half, maybe two years now, um, uh, yeah, two years ago, I started making a voxel game in Unity. Now I've always been a big fan of creative games and voxel games in particular because I love the idea of having a whole world that is completely changeable, destructible, uh, something you can build anything you want with it, and that's always fascinated me. Now, before I started this, I didn't really have too much game dev experience. Uh, I am a software engineer by day, but I mostly work on web-based stuff. Um, so like, game development is still a bit of a sort of alien world to me. But I, I really enjoy it, so that's why I wanted to make an indie game. I started building this, like I said, back in uh, the start of 2021. It took me a few months of sort of part-time work. I followed a number of fantastic tutorials, I'll link those in the description. This really taught me a lot about sort of voxels um, and, and game development in general. I really enjoyed this process and I was really happy with the result. Now midway through the development of this, I ended up landing a new job, and so I ended up switching sort of my focus in my free time to spending sort of all of it focusing on ramping up for this new job. And game development took a bit of a backseat for a while whilst I sort of started this job. And then after that, I sort of, as I sort of began to settle into that role, uh, I started spending my free time sort of working on game development again. So I began by sort of starting off my journey on, on trying to create my first game that, that was sort of my own. So I started by adapting some of the voxel code I'd written to create this sort of procedural island generation and the idea was that I would create the game based around an island, uh, very unique, I know, and uh, yeah, so basically just uh, adapted the, the voxel code so that rather than generating sort of just various land formations, it would just generate these islands in the middle of an ocean, which was really fun to work on and I was quite happy with the result. It was, I guess, more of a, uh, for, for technical exploration, it was just fun. But in terms of creating a game, I think this was probably going down a route that was far too much to work on on my own, at least just in my free time. So I pivoted to a different idea. So to start off, I had this idea for a voxel-based platform game where the environment would be fully destructible and there'd be physics and you could sort of complete these missions in a sort of creative and fun way that would be kind of different to normal platform games. So I started off working on that, I developed uh, a basic voxel level editor. Now on the left you have a menu where you can select different blocks and you can configure these in the code by just adding in sort of new texture references and so on so it's quite easy to adapt. And then using these you can select different blocks and then I can draw into the environment which is what you're seeing here. Now as part of this I also worked on adding in physics, so what I'm doing here is placing down a special type of block, textures were just temporary placeholders so it doesn't look too great, but that block basically allows the physics engine to detect uh, sort of if a specific piece uh, or voxel is connected to the ground. 
and then sort of uses that to create these physics objects. And what you have is this, what you're seeing here, where you can sort of destroy blocks, interact with the environment, and things sort of fall, drop to the floor, and so on. So I really liked this idea, this concept, and because of the size of the environments, it was quite performant. I spent quite a lot of time optimizing the sort of voxel placement code and the, the basic physics. But at the same time, it's a platform game, and I was a little bit concerned about with the platform genre being so saturated, and it's just me working on this on my own. Um, I wasn't sure if this was sort of the right game that I should be working on. So either way, I wanted to develop it into a at least a prototype format, so I could at least kind of get an idea for how it would be. So I also worked on some characters. This is my first attempt. I'm not very good at art, I should say, but this is my first attempt at some basic character concepts. And then I worked on uh, modeling them in Blender. So basically using the concepts as sort of a template and then modeling around them. Um, I basically modeled it around myself, uh, which is why it has a bit of a weird shaped head. Um, but yeah, so, so what you're seeing here is sort of a, I guess, mid-resolution uh, model of the character. And then I rigged it, added it into Unity, and then added some animations from Ixamo. So uh, just added it so that you could run back and forth, somersault, jump around, and so on. And this is just a sort of uh, temporary prototype level I created just to test the, the player controls. So I thought this was fun, but it was far from being a playable game. And I really wanted to work on this other idea that I had in my head at this point, which was this sort of creative building RPG game. So I decided to switch. Now there's a lot of different elements to this game, but I think by far the most technically challenging is probably the building system. Now I needed a building system for the level editor, so I wanted to be able to create these voxel worlds through my own editor, so I had sort of control over how I can create things, how I can place objects and so on. But then I also needed a building system that was fun for the player to use so that they could sort of build things on their land and so on. So. This was definitely going to be the most challenging part for me, at least as I see it. So I got to work on creating a prototype for that first. I started off by taking the menu system that I'd already developed. So basically using this, I can create a new voxel world using parameters that I specify. And then in that world, I can paint these blocks in using the uh, menu system. And then what I can do is I can save that and it will save as a JSON file on the disk. And then I can go to load level and I can find all my file saves in there and I can load the levels back into the editor. So this is the foundation really for the building system or at least the, the level editor that I'm going to develop. So I took this and then I started working on developing it into a 3D game. Once I'd adapted the code to generate 3D chunks instead of just a 2D platform, I then added in some basic controls that would allow you to place blocks. Now, to start with, you could do this by sort of clicking single block placements, and you could also click and drag with your mouse, and that would sort of place long lines of blocks. And this was the basic foundation for the building system, but there was far more I wanted to add to it. And it also needs to work on controller because some people might want to play the game with a controller and I want this game to be friendly to that. So that has some of its own interesting challenges. I should also say at this point, the whole look and feel of the game is sort of temporary because I wanted to focus more on the technical side of uh, sort of getting the building system in. So all of the textures you're seeing the whole way that the game looks at the moment is not sort of reflective of how I want the game to look when it's completed. So then I moved on to adding in uh, some more efficient building controls. So I basically made it so that you could scale the different axes by using your scroll wheel and different keys. So I can sort of scale up on the Y axes or on the X or the Z axes and I can build sort of big structures far quicker than if I was just just, just drag single blocks. So here you can just see I'm just creating random things by just scaling up the different axes and then I can click and drag and that will place the, a line of voxels in the, the direction of my mouse. Yeah, this was a, a little bit challenging to create. It's still not uh, perfect. There's a lot of edge cases that, that need some work and I, I'm working on that still, but I'll, I'll, I'll tweak that as I go along with development. Next, I added an undo button, which is what you're seeing here. So I found that when I was trying to create things, it was getting quite annoying because sometimes I would accidentally drag something too far and then I have to go and edit it. So 
I wanted to add an undo button, so I basically had to refactor some of the, the way I was doing the voxel editing so that it sort of worked with a stack data structure so that I could sort of push updates to that and then I could remove sort of using the undo button and I could also commit changes. And then once I'd done that, uh, I moved on to making the camera controls a little bit more friendly. So if you're creating something in a 3D space, it's kind of a bit difficult when you can only see it from one angle. I wanted to add this sort of idea where you could rotate the camera. So essentially this will be a building mode for the player. So this won't be how the whole game plays out. This is just sort of when you enter your land, you enter building mode. This is kind of the perspective you see. So it's sort of top down perspective where you can move your camera around to different angles and you can build whatever you want sort of quite efficiently. So once I had that in place, I then moved on to being able to edit the environment and in sort of a more efficient way. So right now you could sort of click and drag and add blocks, but if you really wanted to change the environment, it was a bit difficult because there's a lot of voxels in these worlds and it wasn't very efficient in the current manner. So I added chunk editing, which is what you're seeing here. So I can click this button in the bottom left and then I can switch to chunk mode, which will basically allow me to select uh, a certain type of block and the whole chunk will be replaced with blocks of the type I currently have selected. Next, I focused on adding water to the game. So right now the environment looked a bit bland, so I wanted to add different types of textures. So the first thing was adding a water layer. So I could basically replace what was currently just solid blocks with water and then that would allow for me to create different types of environments and so on. So I used a depth shader and basically added it into sort of an isometric depth perspective, which is what you can see here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the final uh, sort of look for the water that I'll use. I'll probably change it when I'm styling the game, but for now I'm just happy that I can place water blocks because it needs its own sort of transparent layer. So that was a little bit of work. Now at this point I'd done quite a lot of coding and I kind of wanted to switch to the art side of things so I started working on some new textures. Now these still aren't going to be the ones I use in the final game, I just wanted to make it look a little bit more unique because I was currently using the same textures from my Minecraft like game. So I learned a little bit of color theory and then created myself a color palette, went into Photoshop and created myself a texture map. Uh, I basically do this by creating a grid and then adding in a bunch of smart objects of a certain size, so 64 by 64 for example. And then I basically edit these smart objects, uh, which then in turn creates this texture map. I usually just do this by pasting in sort of solid colors and then adding in noise. This probably isn't the uh, final look I'm going to go for. Uh, probably not even close, but I was just experimenting at this point, seeing what I could sort of create, uh, see how I could change the look and feel. Now, it's not a massive improvement, but it looks a bit more unique now. I then rework the UI so that you have the idea of sort of these standard blocks, and then you have special blocks as well. So I can add in new blocks to my game by just sort of updating the, uh, the list in the code and mapping them to textures, and then depending on the category I select, they'll be displayed in different tabs. So when you're working in the building system, it's really just easier to sort of select between the different types of blocks. Next, I added in glass. Now glass is a little bit similar to water. It can't really work on the same mesh as the solid blocks, at least to my knowledge, um, because of the different materials that it needs. So glass is a sort of transparent based material. So I needed to create a whole new system to manage that. Um, and given that this is all sort of managed through the code, I had to do a bit of reworking, add in a few extra layers and so on. And then after a while, I got something that sort of roughly resembled glass. The textures aren't great yet, but I'll be working on improving them as I say. So here I'm just creating a uh, basic, uh, well, I don't know why I'm creating a swimming pool, but I thought it'd be cool to try and create like an infinity looking pool now that I had glass. And um, that's what you're seeing here. I'm sort of a mildly failed attempt at creating an infinity pool, but you can kind of see how the glass effect works. So it's sort of slightly transparent. Now you can still add textures to these. So like here, I've just got a slightly um, sort of tinted uh, texture that I created in Photoshop, but I'll probably change that. So next, I wanted to really test out the building system. I had some basic textures that were a little bit better than what I had before. And uh, I had the basic mechanics of the building system. I had the water and so on. So I wanted to try and tie all of that together at this point and basically test it out. So I spent a good few hours really working with the building system, trying to create different things, uh, just random things really, and just see what it would be like to try and create a bit of a world with this system. And from that, I sort of found a few things that I need to 
improve. There's a few edge cases where it can get a little bit frustrating where you're trying to sort of set different sizes and get sort of things to, to be symmetrical or perhaps when you're trying to connect edges of blocks and things like that. But for the most part, I think the core mechanics are there and it's a fairly decent building system. I'm quite happy with it so far, but like I say, I still got a lot of work to do before this is kind of uh, something that I'd, I'd put out. Yeah, so that's really where I, I've taken this game so far. The, the goal really is to get this building system working well, and then I'm gonna move on to creating the world, the characters, uh, the different areas. Uh, right now, it kind of just looks like a floating island. That's not the final aesthetic. I'm gonna change that. It's just the way that the, the building system works at the moment. But yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Like I say, I've been wanting to make this for a long time. Uh, the format was a little bit difficult to decide on. Uh, I've kind of gone for a bit more of a casual format than I originally intended. So hopefully that comes across okay. Hopefully it's not too bad to watch. If you have watched it this far, please consider doing all the usual stuff that I'm supposed to say here, like uh, like the video, and if you want to see more, then please consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate that. And if you have any feedback, anything you'd like to see in the game, anything you think I should do better or could do differently, uh, please let me know. I think community is really important when you're developing these indie games, and I'm really keen to you know follow that. So yeah, thanks for watching.